So to say that the plastic has changed the world is an understatement. It's very clear to all of us today that uh, we have a plastic pollution crisis globally. But how did we get here? It's been reported that 8.3 billion metric tons of plastic has been produced since the introduction. And we still continue to contribute 600 billion pounds of plastic every year into the environment, into our landfill. I said 600 billion. To give you a perspective, an idea of how big is the 600 billion uh, plastic waste, what it, what it feels like, what it looks like, it's enough plastic to build 822 Empire Steel buildings each year, just from this plastic waste. And we can't continue with this model. But I'm here today to offer a solution and create awareness about the specific plastic waste coming from one of the industries, healthcare and life sciences, as we all know, laboratories. One of the most concerning and a dangerous part about the plastic consumables coming from the life science or laboratories is that majority are considered to be biohazard waste, which means the plastics in the labs, which they label them as plastic consumables, disposables, they have come in contact with some sort of a biological samples, infectious diseases, or harsh chemicals, and mindlessly discarded after one-time use. The danger about this biohazard waste is that it can pile up. And before we know it, it could create a crisis for our environment. Piling up all these like, infectious diseases on top of each other in a form of plastic waste, it's a matter of time to break it into our waste streams and into the open atmosphere and create new diseases, new bacteria, and new harsh chemicals. Once again, it's been reported that annually, right now, 12 billion pounds of biohazard waste is being produced each year from the labs. 12 billion pounds. It will fill up the Manhattan Island up to the knee every year. Piling up plastics has come in contact with biological samples. Think about it. Can we continue with this model? How could we sustain our future? The life science and the healthcare industry, their focus is to improve our life, improve our health, longevity of life. And they're doing a great job. They are. But on a back burn of it, they're producing this amount of like biohazard waste that is just a matter of time become its own crisis. So, how did the whole process start? Why the labs are producing so much waste? The generations before, they used to reuse the glassware, Teflons. The labwares that were made out of glass and Teflon, they used to wash and reuse it. The industry started advancing. Number of samples started increasing. Robotics came about. Automation came into the lab. And it was so easy for the industry to just look at the plastic and say, that's a solution. Let's use plastic consumables and dispose it after one time use and keep up with the industry growth. In addition to the big waste that the labs are producing, there's also a cost associated to it. The labs use these plastic consumables, which they're not cheap. And guess who absorbs the cost at the end? Us consumers. It gets passed along to us as part of our bill. So overall, the model is not sustainable. It's an unnecessary practice. It didn't take long for me when I used to work in a large lab and observe and I realized that in the healthcare industry, everything starts from plastic and ends with plastic. It's a linear economic model. Buy it, use it, throw it away. 
So I couldn't sit and see like, you know, this model continue on. We need to start from somewhere and convert this industry to become more sustainable on a circular economical pattern. And it all starts with this, what I'm holding in, in my hand. It's called a pipette. This hollow cylindrical plastic piece is the most common plastic consumables that's been used around the world in every single lab to transfer samples in a form of liquids from point to point to run the test and get results. And after one time use, it gets discarded. I start calling it a straw of the life sciences. And labs go through not tens, not hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, and hundreds of thousands of these on a daily basis. By the end of 2018, it was reported that 77 million pounds of this plastic pipette tips gets discarded into a landfill, which majority considered to be biohazard waste. 77 million pounds of this light, hollow plastic. We calculated how many tips would it be. It's enough pipette tips that if you place it next to each other, it will circle the earth 10 times. Yes. Unnecessary practice. There's got to be a better way to do this. Why can't we just wash and reuse it? We are the most advanced society. Why can't we develop technology that goes hand in hand with the advancement of the life sciences, but in parallel, not produce extra waste or reduce down the waste, as well as reduce down the cost? I'm proud to say that, Gro that Grenoble was founded, stands for Green Innovation. And it is my team and I's, my team, my, my team and I vision to create a plastic-free future for the life science and healthcare industry. We have invented devices that the labs can implement and safely wash, sterilize, and reuse these consumables over and over again. The industry now has seen they don't have to throw away a plastic. They can wash and reuse it. Minimum 10 times. Means 90% reduction in plastic waste, in cost. As of right now, we've been able to reduce 270,000 pounds of plastic in the life science industry, not ending up in a landfill in a form of pipette tips because of our devices. We've been able to help the industry save over $7 million not spent on these pipette tips, but instead reinvest it back into their production and in their science and create more further advancements. And now we are on the mission to focus on other consumables. One day to make the whole industry plastic free. So, I'm here to ask you to take your part. For me, it was working in a lab, paying attention to the pattern, to the process, and question it. For me, it started with a pipette tip, and now taking it to a global stage and expand from it. I want you today, after this event, when you go back home, to think about, pay attention to everything on your daily operations, both at school, at work, at home, in between. And if you see something that is, gets thrown away after one time use, it's a linear practice, ask the question, why should it be that way? Is there a better way? Even though each individual effort of us seems to be very minor, but the combination of all of our effort to cut down the plastic waste will be a difference of us living in a healthy environment in the future or a sea of plastics. So, what is your pipette tip? Pay attention, ask the question, and if you don't like the answer you're hearing, create a solution. Go green, think green, better tomorrow. Thank you.